was a reason to visit you know, the churches. I like the faith and practice. Getting few and far between these days, I'm afraid. A little bit sad. If you'd like to take your Bibles, please, and turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Probably relevant to what's happening in the world today in some respects. I had a message going on in my mind for a couple of weeks. Trying to get it together uh, yesterday. And it fell apart. And praise the Lord. So uh, after tea, I thought I'd better ask the Lord for a message. What you're going to get tonight, it might be a little bit short on depth, but it's the word of God. It's going to speak to you. You stole my soul, man. I thought I was going to cry. <laughs> Couldn't sing yet the whole verse. So praise the Lord. I really like it when that happens, you know, because the Lord is speaking to your heart. And it's uh, always good to be humble. And God is good you know, all the time. Folks, you know, as you know, that I've stepped down from being pastor. Nelson Bible Baptist Church. It was a virtual, all right, Joe, it's your time now, and I walked out and let them do it, so we'll go and visit with them again in the near future. Uh, Joe's doing well, the church is doing well, the Lord's adding to the number up there, which is a real blessing, and I just wonder if it's as soon as I got out of the place that the Lord started bringing people in, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's God's business, isn't it? Salvation is of God. The church is God's building, and we make up that building. So we're just a part of God's work together. And I praise the Lord for you folks as well. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as at the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now leadeth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all wonder and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Let's pray. Father, once again, we just thank you for well, bringing us together, Lord. We thank you so much for your Son, Jesus Christ, who had to come into this world, Lord, to save sinners such as we are, Father. We thank you for that precious gospel. It does indeed present the truth of who you are and the work you've done in our behalf. Lord, we thank you most of all for a risen Saviour and ask that, Lord, for being the Holy Spirit, and you might open our hearts this evening, that we might hear from you. Lord, not my words, but your word here can speak to each of our hearts, Father. Lord, there's some discouraging things around us in the world today in our own country, but Lord, you're our courage, and indeed you are our comfort. And so, Father, we just pray, pray that you make these things manifest to us tonight. We do ask you for Jesus' sake. Amen. 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 So since I walked out of church, amen, we've been going over to uh, Blenheim, Marble Bible Baptist Church. I rang my son Stephen and says that uh, um, I'm no longer the pastor over here. And he said, oh, do you want a job? So I've been working in the garage over in Blenheim with my son Stephen. And of course, as you know, uh, what's been happening in the world today, our government has tried to put you out of business if you have a business. They want to fold you up, they want to control you to such an extent that you're going to bow the knee to the coming king, the Antichrist. Yeah? And so I'm over there helping him out of the pit, if you will. And he was uh, somewhat in trouble there, not being able to work for the two months. And so it's just a blessing to be able to be used even in that sense. Being down here, it's a real blessing to be here. So, look, I'm going to talk about some things here. You've probably heard this COVID stuff until you're all sick of hearing about it, eh? Yeah? It's a crock, isn't it? Okay? This is one of the biggest lies that the devil has ever sent our way. Yeah? 
You understand that all of the plagues and diseases and all these pestilences that have happened in time past, but the government's never stepped in and said, we can control this. Right? The whole purpose of these diseases are is to allow us to get that thing, to get our immune system to react in such a way as that will protect us. That's God's method of dealing with disease. Yeah? And some people are going to die. I don't know if you've read your Bible, but my Bible says that people are going to die. The reason that people are going to die is the wages of sin is death. Yeah? And so God allows these things to happen to bring us to that point as human beings that there is a God, and that there is hope in this world that is offered by God. But the things of this world certainly can't help you. Now, what, what COVID, do you understand if evolution is true, and if this world's teaching is true, that COVID-19 is now COVID-91? Right? This thing has mutated so many times that we must be up there already. Right? This is a virus. And so about what we've got, this whole thing here, that, that sets a scene, it's a preview of the tribulation time, what has happened in this world, in this country, because we're so uh, close to what's happening in our own country, but it's the whole world that's affected by it. This is a pandemic, isn't it? Right? And so what we've got here is effectively behind the scenery, in the back room, the boys have got their heads together, these one-worlders. And this is about control. It's about control. You know? We've had, what have we had? We've seen this lockdown. I believe it's illegal. Yeah. You understand the le uh, government can break their own rules? Probably illegal. Yeah. We've got individual rights. We've got human rights, haven't we? And people claim these things all the time. All of these minority groups are claiming this nonsense all the time. And yet the government can shut down something like this. Yeah. And what's happening over next door? All the queers are running rampant. And you can change your sex from a boy to a girl and whatever else. You can change yourself into a budgery guy, I guess, if you want. You know, the world has gone berserk. And you wait for what's happening. And I tell you what, most of the people that I talk to about these things, they haven't got a clue. And they're praising the Queen of Heaven. Oh, sorry, Jacinda. They're praising her. You know? COVID, they've said that they've got this thing under control, that, that we have got a cure in this country, that this country is healed. Well, the last time I saw the news is people climbing over fences to get out of containment so they could have a bit of fun down the road and give it to somebody else. We can't contain a virus. And finding a cure for a virus. When I was a boy, the doctor said you can't cure viruses. I don't think things have changed. You can't get over these things. What about gun control? Yeah, a favourite of some people. I don't know how many hunters are down here, but there's a lot of hunters up the north part of this country, or the north part of, well, this country's over the South Island anyway. And so we've got this gun control, you know, if they take the guns off the, the good people, who've got the guns now? Because there's an awful lot of guns out there. I think it's the baddies that got them. Yeah. Take a trip over to the east coast of the North Island sometime, yeah? And poke your nose on some property over there where all of that strange greenery is growing, yeah? You'll find out there's a few guns there. We're a police state, if you understand things the way they are. The police want automatic weapons. They can pull you up if you're speeding, giving you a parking ticket. Machine gun stuffed up your nose. The big trouble, or the big worry to me is that it's not only, the, not only a police state, we've got the armed forces now involved in controlling the people in this country. And as soon as the armed forces step in to control our country's people, we're deep in it. Yeah. You need to read what's happening around you, folks. The big thing that the government has brought upon us, and the world, this whole world system has brought upon human beings, is this big four-letter word, fear. Yeah. The moment you start controlling people and telling them the scenario that's not even real or true, you're putting them in a state of fear. My neighbour, he is packing himself. He's absolutely packing himself because of this nonsense about this coronavirus. Yeah? I went to talk to him the other day and he's performing there and he says, I'm so angry with God. 
Yeah? I'm so angry with God. And I said, you don't need to be angry with God. Yeah? Don't be angry with God. I said, it's not his fault. And he said, yeah, well, that's right. Not, not long before that, he said, there is no God. <laughs> and I said, and I so asked him, I said, do you believe there's a God? And he said, yes. But he can't see the separation between the nonsense and the lies that were being fed and the reality of truth that there is a God. Mm -hmm. And that God is a, is a creator. And that God has created a new man who's going to sin. And that's the problem with our will. It's sin. We're in the state that we are because of sin. And God has provided the necessary means to save people. You know, we're down far down the road of unrighteousness. You know, we've already mentioned some of the things that are happening. And as I said, talking, there was a couple of young girls in the church this morning over in Repton, and so I changed the message a bit, and I just said to them, I said, you know, do you understand what's happening here? Yeah. Do you understand what's happening here? You can go down the road and have a sea exchange. You can go, hey, our kids in school, our kids in school, they don't, you don't even have to tell your parents that you're pregnant, or that you're getting these devices to stop you getting pregnant and you can get the pill without your parents knowing. Man, that's wickedness, isn't it? Yeah, God has a different way of things. And so we understand that Ephesians 6, 12, where it says that this, this is about spiritual wickedness in high places. Of course, God in heaven, with all of the naughty angels up there, dealing with those, the God of this world has entered into this realm, and I believe probably will be here permanently soon, but the reality is down here, if there's spiritual wickedness in high places and so far as human beings are concerned, it's got to be at the top. And it's got to be the government first. Because the government is the people, are the people who allow business to run in such manner. They allow finance houses. They allow all of the sort of nonsense to go on. You understand that we are paying their wages? You understand that our tax pays their wages? You understand at this moment in history that each one of you sitting here tonight owes $40,000 because of the government's $200 billion loan. Each one of us are culpable for $40,000 right now. Where's that money going to come from? Oh, just take it off the loan. We don't even know where it came from. And so, we, you know, we've got no control. And so we've seen this, this movement of control uh, going into our government. And they're controlling uh, the, the people on planet Earth. And so we've got all these experts. You know, I like to watch the news. And when I watch the news, I see these two people here blathering on. And I think, man, those are the most stuck-up people I ever know. They're so independently different. And all of they do in there, they're just like groupies, aren't they? The news readers are just groupies. Right? I'm thinking, wow, you people are overpaid. You're probably getting $150,000 a year for sitting there telling lies. Barb thinks I'm cynical. <laughs> <laughs> Dearest. <laughs> I'm not cynical. I'm a realist. Yeah, apart from the times that I'm dreaming. <laughs> but I see these experts, and these experts get up, and man, they're spouting off, spouting off, and they got all of this good advice for everybody to hear. And I'm thinking, fella, I went to university too. You know, I know the same stuff as you do, and the reason when I, when I got out of university, I looked back at university and I said, that was a load of rubbish. <laughs> no, that was a load of rubbish. All you do is spouting the same old, same old, same old, same old, and you put yourself up on a pedestal. Hey, these experts are called high priests of bull. No? It's B-U-L-L. <laughs> and so we've got these people spouting all the time, and there's no truth in it. Hmm? Most of it is opinion. Most of it is uh, propaganda, if you will, for the coming Antichrist. I look at them guys, and all I'm thinking of is Romans 1.22. Hey, professing themselves to be wise. Hey, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. That's all they are. They're just fools in this world. No, no, I think. Yeah? What did Jesus say? Yeah? We need to understand that there is truth and there is Stuff that says it's truth. And if it just says it's truth, what is it? It's just rubbish. Rubbish. And so what, what we've got to do, well, Jesus said, hey, look up. 
for your redemption draws nigh. And that speaks to believers. Okay, it's back in Luke chapter 21. I understand that. But Jesus says, look up for your redemption draws nigh. And if we're going to be encouraged in this world, we stop looking at all this junk that's happening around us. Because eh? I get upset about these LGBT, whatever those things are. Eh? I get upset about all these queers running around and lesbians running around. I get upset that women are starting to rule planet Earth. And we understand that we're back in the Garden of Eden. And we need to say, yes, dear. Okay? Here's the trouble. God set up the authority with men. God is a man. Jesus Christ is a man. And I understand there's an equality between the sexes, but I believe there's a little bit of difference. Amen? I've never seen two men have a baby. I've never seen two women gather together to have a baby either. And it's happening. That's not reality. That's a lie. Anyway, coming down to this stuff. Right? What do we understand from what's happening in the world today? As Christians, what do we understand about what's happening in the world today? That Jesus Christ is coming back really soon. Tell somebody, okay? Tell somebody. Back here in 2 Thessalonians, look at verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. And down at the end of verse 2, it says, as at the day of Christ is as at hand. In verse 3 there, let no man deceive by any means, for that day shall not come. Yeah? Now you can argue about the interpretation here, but it's talking about the second coming of Christ. All right? Two parts to it. Uh-huh. What is the first bit? By our gathering together unto him. That's called the rapture. You just have to go back one book in the first Thessalonians 4 and read about the thing. Then, of course... Uh, right there at the end of verse 2. As that the day of Christ is at hand. So the moment the rapture happens, the day of Christ opens up. We're going to be up in heaven. Praise God. We're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ, and that makes me sweat a little bit. Got a few things to answer for. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful to know that you don't have to answer for your sin? Hmm? Your sin's been taken care of. The blood of Christ still cleanses from all sin. And we've got a practical sanctification locked up in that thing there. But of course, down in verse 3, for that day, whoa, now we can get into some argumentation. That day, we talk about the tribulation. Once the rapture happens, we've got the tribulation ticking in. Jesus Christ is going to come back at the end of the tribulation, after that seven-year period. Yeah. And so what we've got here, just the two parts of uh, the second coming of Christ. I've got something here in that day. Look back in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 2 through 4. And so chapter 4 there, 13 through 18, essentially is about the rapture. And then Christ shall rise first. And there in chapter 5, but of the times and seasons, brethren, excuse me, I have no need that I write unto you. You say, look, you've already got the knowledge that's been passed on. As Christians, we've got a Bible here. As Christians, we have this information right in front of us about God's program. Yeah? For yourselves, verse 2, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord, so come and say the thief in the night. The day of the Lord, that's that day. The day of the Lord is a time of judgment. The day of the Lord is after the rapture happens. And the day of the Lord in very specific terms concerning the tribulation is a tribulation period. There's different definitions I understand about the day of the Lord. It can be one single day, a single moment in the day. They mean the seven-year period. You want to define it as a three-and-a-half-year period. You want to define it as a thousand years. You want to define it as a thousand seven years. The context will tell you what it is. We ourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes set the thief in the night. It's going to sneak up on us, sneak up on the world. For when they, the unsaved world, the world shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon you as travail upon a woman of a child, and they shall not escape. Hey, they've had their opportunity to receive Christ in this age now, in the, tri in the tribulation now, there's going to be a lot of people preaching Christ. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And they should, hey, if you reject Christ, you're not going to escape. If you're caught in your sins, you're not going to escape the judgment of God. If you're caught in your sins, you're going to die in them. And I believe after that, you're going to a fairly warm place. I think it's called hell. Brother, am I going to write here? H-E-L-L? -L? To the lake of fire, actually. Amen, that's coming. Yeah. Yeah, it's even warmer. 
Yeah. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day, there it is, that day should overtake you as a thief. Yeah. You understand that because of Christ's salvation, you're not going to go into this time of judgment where God is going to pour out his wrath, his anger on an unsaved world, an unbelieving world. Back in second Thess there. Second Thess, whoops, I lost it. The page is worn out. Second Thess chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as at the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. What man are they talking about? Well, back in Matthew 24, we're talking about false, any false Christ and false prophets. If you want a context of today, it's the experts. It's our government. They're lying to you. They're lying to you. They haven't got COVID-19 under control. They haven't healed this nation. In fact, they've caused such a problem in this nation, it's never going to get off its, off its knees again. Yeah, I love this verse because in context here, Paul is saying, look, this, you've had some trouble over there in Thessal Thessalonia. You've had some trouble over there because someone has been writing letters and put my name on it. The trouble is that, you know, they spelled my name wrong. A P A U L. And he said, that you be not soon shaken. The problem with today is that this is fits right by application, fits in today. Don't be shaken in mind. Okay? With all of the junk flying around, with all of the lies, with all of these bundles of experts in every area trying to say something and trying to get your, your attention, these high priests of the devil here trying to affect your mind. Yeah. My Bible says that we're supposed to be have a, having a transformed mind. Not be not conformed to this world. Don't let them conform you to this world. Don't let, let them mess with your head. Because that's all they want to do. And the moment you start believing the lie, just a slippery slope. There's only one truth, folks. Amen. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. This is his personal testimony. Here's the truth. Shaken in mind, or be troubled. Yeah, we've all got troubles, we all have worries, we all have concerns. Yeah, they might be financial, they might be marital, I don't care what it is. But Paul is saying, hey, don't let stuff, this stuff mess with you. Here's the book. If you know you're saved, you're going home to heaven and keep your focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Or be troubled, neither by spirit. This is, we're in so, spiritually a very dark, dark time. Nor by word, nor by letter as from us. Is that the day of Christ is at hand? It's, don't panic, folks. Don't you panic, you believers. Keep your eyes on the Lord because he's coming back soon. Don't listen and watch all of the junk that's happening out there. It was really sad to see, of course, that the North Island lost the rugby. There's some important stuff that we've been watching on. <laughs> Where are they from, brother? Christchurch. Hey, what are they called? Crusaders. Amen. And I don't care what they think of Crusaders. That's a good word for me. Now you keep pressing on. And let no man deceive you by any means. You get that? Let no man deceive you by any means. What do you got? Well, you go over to Colossians and you get tradition, religion. And all that new age junk that's flying around, we can just come down to common ground and just be messed with by someone taking too much of your money. Yeah. This, I'm, I'm so glad that the governor's given me this great assurance. That because T.Y. Point is closing down, electricity's going to come down in price. Don't believe the lie. Don't believe the lie. It's going to go that way. That's up. Yeah. I don't know, we're going to see if they're going to... What's that GST stuff? They could whip that up to 20% as well. The government is broke. This country is bankrupt. Don't get sucked in and put your hope in this nonsense that's going on around you. Unsure things. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except they shall... Let, except they verse 3. Except they come falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Awesome stuff, isn't it? Don't you 
believe this? It's like a fairy tale, isn't it? Huh? This is some science fiction stuff, isn't it? Outside of this book is science fiction. Hmm? Science falsely so called. Man, I'm a scientist. And I don't believe anything that science has got to say anymore. Except they've come to falling away first. What does that mean? Oh, backsliding. No. Falling away is a falling away from faith. This is apostasy. Is any apostate churches in this world? <coughs> well, there's some churches that call themselves the Christian churches, and they ain't. Yeah. And there's a whole long line of them. The Roman Catholic Church, they were never Christians. SDAs, I don't know about some of them, they might have a few saved folks, but the Joeans, if Jesus Christ is just a man, they're all going to hell. By definition. We've got a lady in this country who wears a head covering so that she can get along with Muslims. Right? She's an ex-Mormon. Jacinda is an ex-Mormon. Hmm? Lining out with the Muslims. Wake up to some of this stuff. Whatever's coming out of her mouth is empowered by the devil. She's gone. She needs the Lord, of course, but oh, she's probably too far gone. I think the reason that she left the Mormon church is that she didn't want her husband to overlook her when she had the veil over her face in the grave. You know, that was stuck. Okay. Sorry, dearest, you weren't the best wife I had. I've got another 12 over here. I'm going to leave you in the grave. I've got another one over here that I preferred, and we're going to have space children forever. Man. And so this apostasy has to come. Man, it's been happening for how long? Probably since Adam tripped over his mouth in the Garden of Eden. But apostasy's here, you know? The Christian church, the true representatives of Christ in his day and age are gone. They're gone. Hmm? You know, not long, not long after I got saved, that's about oh, a few years ago now, the first thing I came across was a charismatic, and he said, can you speak in tongues? I said, what? He said, can you speak in tongues? I said, no, I can speak with French and Latin and a bit of German. <laughs> no, he said, tongue man. I said, no. He said, you can't be saved. Well, there you are. That's apostasy. That's not what my Bible says. Okay? If you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Hmm? If you believe that you're a sinner and that Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for you personally, you can be saved. Hmm? He died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. You understand that when Jesus Christ rose from the dead the third day, the Holy Spirit said, Woohoo! This fellow here, Jesus Christ, he's the Son of God. Romans 1 4. He's God. Hmm? And if the charismatics are doing so well, don't want to harp on about these fellows, why don't they go down to the hospitals and do some healing? Right? I don't care if they speak in tongues, but heal somebody. Show the proof of your belief. Get down to the graveyard, man. I want my dad out of the grave. I'll make you some breakfast, dad. Don't want your bones arriving. I want you there. Nothing. Nothing. Here's the book. Here's the truth. And Jesus Christ has made it very, very plain who you are if you're saved. Where you're going if you're saved. What he wants to do with you if you're saved. And he wants other people to know. It's too scary sometimes. Eh? Mm. Yeah, I'm as big a wimp as any of you, don't worry. Ah, don't be led astray. Eh? Apostasy, it has to come. We've got all sorts of stuff. Yeah, evolution. By definition, it's an atheistic doctrine. And for a Christian to believe in an atheistic doctrine, is, wow, hello. Secular humanism and all this other nonsense, eh? This man of perdition here, the man of sin, the son of perdition here, this is the Antichrist. And so when this great apostasy happens, so things are going to get worse, not better, folks. They're going to get worse. So when this happens, this man of sin is going to be revealed. He's going to pop up there. Wow, what a good guy. This man, he's going to bring world peace. Isn't he? Right? We need some politician to stand up and make such an influence on the world that everybody said, wow, this guy is somebody. And he's able to speak such eloquent words 
little bit better than myself. I like to be a little bit more common than eloquent. Why? Because I'm common. We need to understand what's happening. We need to see what the Bible says. We need to see the context of the times that, that we're now living in. Yeah? And I believe that there's another fellow in the Bible who is called the son of perdition. Who is it? That jolly old fellow who had the bag, Judas Iscariot. Right? Now over in John 6, 70, Jesus said, one of you is a devil. Talking about Judas. I believe after they had the evening together, the last supper together, um, Judas was told to disappear and get about his business, which Jesus knew what he's going to do. And old Judas, taking the bag with him, whoopie do, runs off down the road. As he went out the door, what does it say in the Bible? In John chapter 17. Uh, yeah, John 13, I'm sorry. It says, Satan entered into Judas. Do you understand that? This is exactly typical of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to be inhabited by the devil. He's going to be the imitation Christ, the false Christ. That unholy trinity, the devil and the Antichrist, the false prophet. Over in, well, we're going to look. Revelation 13. What do you say? Nine o'clock to the brother, so... <laughs> I've got one here. I'm looking at nine o'clock. <laughs> Revelation 13. <clears throat> Funny, isn't it? Revelation 13. Lucky good number 13. And we've got this beast coming out of the sea here in Revelation 13. So I just want to have a look at, uh, well, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Wow, this guy here is pretending to be Jesus Christ. He's pretending to be the Lord, and here's the magnificence of his testimony. He's got a mortal head wound. Whether he dies or not, all of a sudden he's raised up and he's walking again. Okay. Who can raise himself from the dead? Only God? <laughs> yeah. There's deception of the first order, isn't it? And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. I mean, wow, here's the devil now, and he's getting the worship. He's, what is it? He's usurped God. Yeah? Which gave power unto the beast. And so we understand the Antichrist is empowered by the devil. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Yeehaw, what a man. Who is able to make war with him? Oh, so this man of peace, huh? he's going to wage war. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And so we see this forty and two months, it's three and a half years, the second half of the tribulation, where this guy is going to stand up. He's made such an impression on the world, and now he's going to walk into the temple in Jerusalem and sit down and say, Hey, fellas, I'm God. And then the penny's going to drop for a few Jews, isn't it? Okay. They rebuilt the temple for the Messiah to come back, and here's the anti Messiah. And he opened his mouth, verse 6, he opened his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Etc. And another fellow down a little bit further, in verse 13, this false prophet, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth and inside of men. Well, it's, I can't do that. I can strike a match. I can, in time past, I played with a can of petrol. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't come down from heaven. Amen. Verse 14, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. Wow. How many people are going to see? Whosoever doesn't know the Lord, whosoever that won't believe that Jesus Christ is coming again, huh? that person who won't repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and deceiving them to dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live, and he had power to give life under the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. 
technology. Technology, I believe so. We'll have a look back in Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. That's in the Old Testament, I think. Daniel chapter 3. of the Antichrist. Nebuchadnezzar, the king under all people, nations and languages. Whoa, bring it into context of today. Okay? Antichrist stands up. Under all people, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God has wrought toward me. How great are his signs. Whoop, I mean, chapter 4, sorry. Chapter 3, verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Jura in the province of Babylon. Mm. When then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the councillors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had made. Hey? All of the big charangs are going to arrive. Hey? All of the big charangs are going to arrive. I believe this represents those people who don't have to take the mark of the beast. Revelation 13 again. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, sheriff, treasurers, counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province were gathered together under the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then, and Herod cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbolt, that book, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Hey, context. Move it over to Revelation chapter 13. Move it in the middle of the tribulation. Yeah? And whosoever uh, falleth not down and worshippeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. I believe over the tribulation it's going to be decapitation. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbolt, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and their languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that never get out of the king, etc. We are, we are there. Hey, what have we got here? What did you sort of say the other night? Hmm? I, I haven't got the direct quote here, so you can correct me if you wish, but she said something along these lines. That rock music has been such a comfort to our people through these difficult times. Hmm? Wow. Listen to that. So all of a sudden, we've got this music. You understand, hey, the last time I went to a rock concert, wasn't last week, it was a few years ago, but I got saved, praise the Lord. Hey, the last time I went to a rock concert, there were 40,000 people. 40,000 people. When I got saved and went to church, there was 12 of us. Hmm? You understand what's happening around it? Music is a big call. Music is something that is going to affect either your flesh or your spirit. If you're saved, the spirit is where we're supposed to be and worship of God. If you're worshiping God in the flesh, there's something wrong with what you're listening to or something wrong with your heart. And what we've got here, collected before us here in Daniel chapter 3, is typical of what's going to happen in the tribulation. Pretty simple stuff. Yeah? That's got to keep your eyes in your head and ears on the side of your head. No, this is weird stuff. Weird stuff. And so we've got this beast. He's going to sit down in the temple, I believe, over Matthew 24. Well, we'll go over Matthew 24, verse 15. Is God in control? Hmm? Does it look like he's in control? Do you believe what God says in the Word of God? He's in control. It may not look like it. Don't sweat on it. He's still there. He's still in heaven. I believe he's probably going to stand up pretty soon as well. Stephen saw it. Woo! Matthew 24, verse 15. And when he therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, who shall read it, let him understand. You know, it's straight out of Daniel chapter 9, verse 26 and 27. It just reveals a little bit 
about what's happening now. Yeah? And when we read this book, this is a timeless book. This is the Lord Jesus Christ's personal testimony. And what we've got here is God reaching out to people and reaching out to people and reaching out to people all the way through the Bible. And every time that God is reaching out to people, the devil steps in. Yeah? If you want to look at the God set a test for Adam, didn't he? Adam failed the test, judgment came. Why did he fail the test? Because the devil got in. But the Lord is still there offering salvation. Man is a sinner. And Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. He's the only Saviour. There's only one word of God. It's the Holy Bible that God has put into our hands. No argument. We've got difficult times around us. But it doesn't seem so difficult because we've all got full bellies. We've all got so many different inputs from everywhere that we think we're going all right. And we've got maybe we've got a job and we feel quite comfortable. But there's a lot of people not working. And when hard times strike, there's only two things that can happen. You're going to draw closer to the Lord or you're going to draw away. When this rubbish well, it's struck home pretty hard here now, hasn't it? We're really in the throes, the death throes of this nation, the death throes in one sense of planet Earth. But God, have a look over in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. God is in control. And the whole purpose of God was to redeem sinners. After Adam's sin, God's purpose then kicked in that he's going to redeem sinners. Hey, you understand that we were in Christ before the worlds were framed? Hey? God in eternity past, I don't know where he was, he must have been sitting on his throne somewhere, it's just hard to figure, isn't it? That there is a God, and in eternity past, he has this counsel with himself. Hey, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they have this counsel. And he says, well, fellas, we really need to do something to give us the glory. Not pride, but create something that will have a choice whether to choose God or not. And so we see this thing here. And so Jesus Christ obviously chosen for the world to frame to die. In Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus Nazareth, the man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, he hath taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding on them. Wow. God had stuff figured out before anything happened. And I asked the if God is in eternity, we talk about eternity past and eternity future. There isn't a past and future in eternity. And so what's this little capsule called time? Hmm? So God is looking at this capsule called time and he can see the beginning and the ending. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He already knows what's happening. And if you've got a problem in this world, if you've got any sort of problem in your life, he can deal with it. Come unto me, all you that labour and you be laid, and I'll give you rest. We don't let the, have to let this nonsense affect our thinking. We don't need to put off, be put off course. We, don't, we, we sometimes need a good test from God in life just to test our faith. And boy, we need those quite often. Because what did Paul say? That he be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as at the day of Christ at the end. Yeah? You need to keep your eyes on the Lord. I'm going to cut it short here, folks. Don't you? 15 pages, but we'll cut it down. Look at Galatians 1 4 here. Look at Galatians chapter 1, verse 4. Just a single reason for Jesus Christ here. Yeah? We're living in this present evil world. Paul calls it a present evil world. And here in Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, well, we'll read verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil word, a world according to the will of God and our Father. Wow. That he might deliver us from it. Hmm? You struggling? 
I'm struggling with anything? Or this, or this, or this, or this? Or this? You can have all what's in here. Amen? It doesn't matter, eh? It doesn't matter. God's going to look after us. And we need to understand that. He's going to be delivered from this present evil world. Why? Well, I think I'll go and find the first thing. It's over Romans 8. <coughs> Romans 8. Yeah. Romans 8, verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth and pain together until now. Huh? Man's sinfulness has caused this whole universe a problem. Verse 23, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of the body. There's only one part of our salvation to be complete, isn't it? Get rid of this rotten piece of flesh here. Yeah? You'll see me one day, and I'll see you one day, and we will all be like Jesus Christ. Doesn't mean the girls are going to change into men. Okay. You're going to have a glorified body. You're going to be made perfect because God promised. Faithful as He that calls you, who also will do it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We started off, I guess. I guess the message had a bit of a title. Look up for your redemption draws now. That's what we've got to do. And so. Luke 21 verse 28. Luke 21 verse 28. Well done, um, right? Okay. We'll go over there and read it. Luke 21 28. It reminds me of the average Kiwi. Well, how we used to be. I don't know, before all these new modern Kiwis these days, you haven't got the same problems we used to have when I was a kid. You've got more. <laughs> Luke 21, 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, what are we talking about? All of the troubles before the tribulation kicks in. Then look up. Now listen. And lift up your heads. Look up. And lift up your heads. Yeah? Awesome, isn't it? For your redemption draws nigh. I love that one. Lift up your heads. Yeah? When you're despondent, what do you do? When you're depressed, you hang them down. When you're feeling good, you can stand 